a look at another uh, real life EKG, get a little practice in it, walk through this thing and see if we can't come up with interpretation. So as usual, take a minute, uh, look at this EKG and do an interpretation of it. Pause this video, do whatever you need to so you got plenty of time, but uh, run through it, rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, ischemia, uh, infarct. Uh, don't forget to throw in an interpretation of blocks and any patterns you might find. And uh, then we'll come back in a second. So again, take a minute and let's look at it and then we'll come back. And hopefully that's been enough time for you to go through it. Let's again go through this in a systematic way so that we don't miss anything. Start off with rate. Uh, when we calculate rate again, as, as you've kind of told you before, my favorite way to do it is to go through and look at uh, <clears throat> the uh, just the total, you know, the 10 second EKG. So how many QRS complexes in 10 seconds? How many beats in 10 seconds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. We just about got 12 in there. Uh, so let's see. It's again a 10 second strip. There's six of those in a minute. So 12 times six uh, gives us 72. And we're just a little short of that. So let's say a rate of around 70, something like that. That's pretty close. Uh, so let's call this a uh, essentially a normal rate, but we'll call it 72. Uh, rhythm. When we look at this, we see that there are QRS complexes and they are preceded by P waves. There seems to be a P, looking down here at the longer strip, a P before each QRS, P before each QRS, P before each QRS, P before each QRS, etc, 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 all the way through. Uh, so that looks like probably a sinus rhythm. Uh, rate, rhythm, axis. Again, if you had to skip axis, you could, but uh, we'll look at it and say that we did it. Uh, a lot of people look at, again, lead one, uh, which is upright, and lead AVF, which is also upright. So if the, you know, lead one points right to left, patient right to patient left. Uh, and so if the main vector of the QRS complex is uh, following along that, that means it goes right to left. And uh, AVF is essentially uh, middle of the heart down towards the feet. And so if it's positive in that way, uh, that means it's going somewhere uh, along that trajectory as well. And so this is going to lie in the normal axis. If we look at lead two, we find it's also up and that could give us a little bit more clue and if it was not entirely clear. But we're up in one, up in two, up in AVF. So this will be a normal axis. And, you know, just looking at it, let's say that this is probably uh, 45 degrees, something like that, somewhere around there. Uh, that's, again, just a guess, and, and the number doesn't really matter that much. All right, so uh, normal rate, sinus rhythm, normal axis. Uh, how about the intervals? Uh, <clears throat> oops, I put it up there a little bit early, but let's look at the PR interval here. That's the one we usually start with. PR interval should, again, be less than one big box, the big dark lines here. Uh, so the start of the P wave over to the start of the QRS complex, that ought to be under one large box. And in this case, you see that it, you know, P wave starts here, that would be normal if it if the QRS started here, but it's actually a little bit longer. So this is a long PR interval, and we see that uh, you know in in other areas where we can observe the uh, P wave as well. See that uh, there would have been a normal one, and it's actually a little bit longer. So this one, in this case, it's not under one small or one large box. So this is a long PR interval, and this one is you know you can count the little boxes, and it turns out to be like two fifty or something like that. Uh, so we've got a long PR interval. Let's look at the other intervals just to say that we did it as well. Uh, I look at the PR interval and then I look at the QRS complexes. It, the QRS complex should start and finish uh, within the span of three little boxes. And so this is one little box there. And it looks like it's done by two little boxes. So this is a narrow complex QRS. And then looking at the QT interval, uh, we find that the, you know, going peak to peak on the QRS complexes or whatever you want to say, we're just estimating. Uh, in this case, you know, there to there does the QT, or sorry, does the T wave finish up? Is it back to normal before about halfway through those two things? And it looks like it is. So we'll call this estimatingly, we don't see a long QT uh, interval. We don't see a prolonged QT interval. So uh, in this case, we just see a long PR interval and that's it. Along with that, whoops. Uh, so we got rate, rhythm, axis, uh, <clears throat> a long PR interval. When we look at uh, blocks, which is the next thing I kind of look at, uh, I look for two things, AV blocks as well as um, essentially the QRS blocks or the uh, interventricular blocks, stuff that you see the right bundle, the left bundle, the fascicles, that kind of stuff. 
in this case, um, what we see is we've got, we know we've got the long PR interval already. Uh, that we've already just kind of talked about. We notice that there is a P wave before each QRS, P wave before each QRS, P wave before each QRS. Uh, there's no dropped beats that would indicate a second degree block. Uh, the PR interval doesn't change. It doesn't get longer with each one like we'd look for uh, in a second degree type one. And again, there's no like irregularly drop beats like we'd see in a uh, second degree block type two. And there's no QRS P wave dissociation, i.e. there's a P wave that corresponds with each QRS and that's pretty convincing. Uh, so it's not a third degree block. So we'll call this a uh, long PR interval, but the rest looks the same. So this is a, this is a first degree block. Uh, if you remember from the uh, differentiation of it, there is a long space where the uh, AV node just doesn't conduct it very fast. All right, so uh, first degree AV block. We don't see any interventricular blocks or fascicle blocks or anything like that. These are narrow complex QRSs, so you can't really have an interventricular block without a uh, long uh, or a wide QRS complex, uh, truly, you, and no obvious morphology like that. So, um, first degree AV block, we'll call that for the blocks. How about axis, or sorry, how about um, ischemia and infarcts, rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, blocks, ischemia and infarcts? Uh, I usually go through and survey for ST elevation, and so here's our ST segment. I don't see any big uh, I don't see any big LST elevation in any of these. No STEMI, certainly. Uh, there's maybe just the suggestion that this one just looks ever so slightly higher up than this interval here than the baseline. Um, but it's certainly not one small block, which is one small box, which is uh, the definition of STEMI. Um, and it's really not like replicated other places. I think it's just one of those ones that kind of looks funny. Uh, but so no obvious ST, pathologic ST elevation and no obvious uh, ischemia, which we would see as T wave inversion or ST depression. Uh, if you notice when I looked through there, I don't see any obvious uh, ST changes. That one looks like it almost might be down, but it's not replicated on the next beat. Um, so no obvious infarcts, no obvious ischemia uh, when we look at these ST segments and T waves. No obvious infarct, no obvious ischemia. Last thing I look for patterns, and this is things like peak T waves for hyperkalemia, uh, or like the needle, uh, is it the needle-like Q waves of hokum, uh, or the delta waves that you might see, um, or the little blip at the beginning of the um, QRS complex, like you might see in um, uh, in um, reentrant tachycardias, uh, that kind of stuff. I don't see any of that. Uh, nothing looks really funny. So we'll call this uh, no obvious patterns. We'll, we'll say normal normal morphology over there all. So let's take and put it all together. Uh, we have a rate of 72, which is normal. We have sinus rhythm, which is normal. We have normal axis. Uh, the intervals, they have a long PR interval, which corresponds with the first degree AV block. Uh, no obvious ischemic, uh, ischemia or infarcts and uh, no obvious pattern recognition stuff otherwise. So we'll call this uh, sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. And that will wrap it up for EKG of the week uh, this time. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, let us know, leave a comment, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And otherwise, we will catch you later. Stay safe out there.